Good evening and welcome again to the 2024 UIS Alumni Gala. I'm Carly Hawkins and it is my great privilege to serve as the chair of the UIS Alumni Board. <laughs> and to welcome you to this evening's great event. Uh, tonight is particularly special for me as many of my fellow alumni from the Capital Scholars Program are here. <laughs> to celebrate UIS with me. And there is a lot to celebrate about our university as you are about to hear. We have a wonderful program planned for you tonight. And in just a few minutes, you'll hear from Dr. Nick Jones, Executive Vice President of the University of Illinois System, and Dr. Janet L. Gooch, Chancellor of University of Illinois Springfield. And of course, we will also hear from our award recipients being honored this evening. I would also like to recognize my fellow members of the UIS Alumni Board that are with us tonight. Tina Buck Harth, Jay Reyes, Randy Witter, Matthew Mayer, Brian Cross, Jamal Hollins, Karen Hasera, Julie Kellner, Kyle Simpson, John Lauder, Cinda Klickna, Madeline Cullick, Celeste Smith, and Christian Nix. Thank you all so much for being here. Please enjoy the company at your tables, and we will continue the program after dinner. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is an amazing event where we have the privilege of celebrating and recognizing our incredible alumni and our supporters. As Chancellor, I love to tell the UIS story. This is a very special university with a very rich history, a bold vision, and a very bright future. I'm so proud to be a Prairie Star, and I know each of you is as well. Let's hear it. Tonight, I would like to share with you some examples of just how bright our future is looking. Thanks in large to uh, our dedicated faculty, staff, alumni, and community supporters. When I joined UAS in 2022, a lot of great work was already in progress to help UAS move forward in areas that are critical to our su sustained success. Most importantly, we have been laser focused on growing our enrollment in strategic and intentional ways. Last fall, we were thrilled to see an 11% increase in enrollment over the prior year. We now have a total of 4,661 students. This year marked one uh, year of consistent semester over semester growth, which extended to the current spring. This spring semester, we are up 6.2% 6 over spring of 2023. I am very proud of these results and extremely grateful to our faculty and our staff for the very hard work, creativity, and collaborative spirit it takes to move the needle on enrollment. The important work of recruiting and retaining our students is paramount to our university's long-term success. Our progress over the past year has been very encouraging and confirms we are on the right track to keep increasing our enrollment. It remains a challenging task, but we have a smart, hardworking team in place. The not-so-secret formula to healthy enrollment is to be successful at both recruiting students who will succeed at UIS and retaining them once they are with us. One new enrollment initiative that we have launched recently is a three-year pilot program that offers in-state tuition to out-of-state students from the St. Louis and the Quad Cities area. We also launched the Prairie Promise, which is a four-year financial aid program that covers tuition and fees for first-time, first-year undergraduate students from Illinois. Yeah, that's a big deal. Both of these programs are going to start in fall of 2024. And what's special about these initiatives is that, is that they both expand access to education and close the achievement gap for students from diverse uh, backgrounds. 
Our commitment to in, uh, retention has been further fortified by a $2.25 million grant that we received from the Department of Education. This, yeah, that's a big deal too. This grant will enable UIS to increase and enhance high impact practices on our campus. High impact practices are educational opportunities that have been widely tested and shown to enhance retention, graduations, and career placement, particularly for historically underrepresented students. I want to talk a little bit about athletics. I'm a big athletic supporter. I go to all the events, and our students have been doing very well, including multiple appearances in NCAA regionals across various sports, including baseball, softball, women's golf, men's soccer, men's cross country, and women's cross country. The women's golf team clinched its inaugural GLVC championship, marking a historic achievement for the program. And the men's soccer team secured its first GLVC regular season title this fall. In particular, I want to highlight the success of one of our men's cross country runners. Many of you may know Court Ross who emerged as a standout for winning the GLVC Cross Country Championship. This marked the fourth consecutive year that a Prairie Star claimed victory in this prestigious competition. Court also went on to participate in the NCAA Division II Cross Country Championships, where he finished 18th, and he earned the title of All-American. He is also an exceptional student. He has a 4.0 GPA in exercise science, which is his major, and he was named the GLVC Fall Scholar Athlete for men's cross country. Yeah, that's really good. Collectively, our student athletes' achievements underscore their commitment and hard work to succeed not only at their passion, but also academically. And it reflects the dedication and the unwavering support from our coaches, from our faculty, and our fans who help them along the way. As many of our alumni and supporters know, UIS was founded as an institution willing to take risks and embrace innovation to enhance our public good. That's still true, true today. Nearly 55 years later, as we contribute to the advancement of our society in cutting edge ways. Over the past year, we've opened two innovative new spaces on our campus that offer students the chance to develop advanced skills in high demand areas, setting them up for professional success, while also providing a fresh outlet, outlet for collaboration, creativity, and fun. The first space is called our Orion Lab, and that opened in our Health Sciences Building in January of 2023. It serves as a vibrant hub of research, education, and re recreation, where students can explore their ideas and bring them to life through physical objects. The space is equipped with advanced technology and cutting edge equipment intended to enhance problem solving, critical thinking, and uh, collaboration skills. The, the Orion Lab is one of several initiatives UIS has launched to help position the university at the forefront of artificial intellig intelligence, education, and research. AI is rapidly transforming today's workforce. And in response to that reality, we have several faculty and staff from throughout the university serving on committees that are focused on the impact of AI in teaching, ethics and policy, community collaboration, and student engagement. These individuals are passionate about embracing the new world of AI and harnessing it for good. And our Orion Lab will help spark brilliant ideas we hope to see come to life. Our second new innovative space is our eSports arena. This opened last fall in Founders Hall residence. 
This is a state-of-the-art gaming space that allows Prairie Stars to virtually compete against other collegiate teams as well as to play recreationally. This space is so much more than just a gaming room. Students who are involved with eSports develop skills they can use both inside and outside of the classroom, such as strategic thinking, planning and time management skills, and teamwork. We are so proud of these new spaces and all they have to offer to our students. I also want to mention our important work supporting our innovation and workforce development in the community and beyond. Most of our workforce development programming occurs through Innovate Springfield, our downtown business incubator. Last summer, we hired Rob Kerr to serve as the Director of Innovation and Opportunity to push our innovation agenda forward. We also hired Ben Haig as the new Director of Innovate Springfield. And with his leadership, the Sangamon CEO program for aspiring high school entrepreneurs is now part of Innovate Springfield programming. Starting in the fall, Capital Area Career Center students will have access to a new high-tech lab similar to our Orion, la Orion Lab. That's a hard word for me to say. Orion Lab at Innovate Springfield. The space aims to provide a central hub for innovation, learning, and collaboration. Rob and Ben's vision for workforce development and economic vitality is really exciting, and I cannot wait to see where they take it from here. Looking ahead, the Library Commons, a vibrant and student-centric learning space, will be built on campus along the quad. This is just on the horizon. It'll be a 52,000 square foot space designed with student success in mind. The design phase is nearly complete and we hope to break ground later this year. This will be an amazing new space for students to learn, to study, and to collaborate, as well as receive advising and other important student support services. I could go on and on because I love UIS and all that's happening, but I'll stop here. I hope you are just as inspired by UIS's progress and potential as I am. As we continue to strengthen our ties with Springfield and the surrounding communities, I believe that growing success of our university and our partnerships will continue to be a testament to the transformative power of collaboration. I hope that each of you will stay engaged with us. Your partnership is incredibly important to the success of our institution, to our students, to our faculty, and our staff. I want to thank you very much for your support, for being here, and for being a Prairie Star. Thanks. The applause was started by Nick Jones, who I'm now going to introduce, so I appreciate that very much. I'll say nice things about him. Uh, traditionally, this would be the part of the program where I would introduce President Colleen. And I would ask him to lead us through the awards presentation, but unfortunately he couldn't be here tonight. So our next speaker, Dr. Nick Jones, he's brought some words from President Colleen and some congratulations directly. And we're greatly appreciative that he could be here to share the words on, on behalf of President Colleen. So I'll tell you a little bit about Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones is the Executive Vice President and Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Illinois System. He is a seasoned academic leader and he serves as second in command to the President. He's the Senior Operating Officer and the Chief Academic Officer of our University System. Before assuming this distinguished role in January of 2023, so he is newer than me, Dr. Jones spent nearly a decade in Pennsylvania State University, where he was a special advisor to the president, and he also spent nine years as executive vice president and provost. From, 20, from 2002 to 2004, he served as the head of the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So please help me, in, help me welcome Dr. Jones.
I always worry a little bit when the <clears throat> picture gets put up <clears throat> that I could be wearing the same tie. Um, but I have a UIS tie, so I'm safe uh, uh, this evening. <laughs> Thanks to the Chancellor. So thank you, Chancellor Gooch. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, and for those of you who are already wondering where the accent is from, it's from New Zealand, just saying. Um, I welcome uh, also the many alumni who are here with us uh, tonight. Thank you uh, for your engagement and your active support of our wonderful university. As we consider all of your remarkable achievements, it is crystal clear how integral you are to the success of the University of Illinois system. When it comes to choosing a university that provides a tr transformative, world-class education, the U of I system is definitely, and I'm trying to be hip here, trending. In the past decade, the system has grown from about 78,000 students to our current size of almost 95,000. Total, total freshman enrollment last fall was a record 13,231, bringing our undergraduate enrollment to a record of slightly more than 60,000 students. Pretty remarkable. With UIS con consistently ranked among the best in its class in the Midwest, our overall enrollment here, as you heard from the Chancellor, grew a very strong 11% last fall, including a 5% gain in first-time freshmen. Springfield also grew in online enrollment by 19%. And, not just because we're here in Springfield tonight, I must mention that we are grateful for the support that we have received from the state legislature in recent years. That strong support is a reflection of healthy growth in enrollments, along with an understanding that we must recruit and retain distinguished faculty members. Our alumni play a vital role in keeping our state legislators informed, so thank you for that effort as well. We're also not shy about bragging that almost 80% of the system's undergraduate students are indeed from the state of Illinois. That's significant because Illinois residents who graduate from system universities are more likely to remain in the state. They live here and they work here and they contribute to our economy and society in numerous ways. So yes, students are flocking to us and that's wonderful news given the headlines about challenges generally faced by higher education across the nation. But the story doesn't stop there. Our system-wide six-year graduation rate of 77% is 13 percentage points higher than the national average for four-year public colleges and universities. And further, our graduates depart with debt levels that are well below the national average. We have increased our own financial aid spending by almost 60% over the past decade to $277 million a year. And that number does not include federal and state aid for our students. At this point in our evening, President Tim Colleen and I would both love for me to be able to turn the microphone over to him so he could tell you more. But President Colleen is traveling on U of I system business, and to his regret, he cannot be with us. But he did ask me to share a few words with you on his behalf. So I am going to channel my inner President Colleen for a few moments. There is much to celebrate here at UIS, and those results begin with the leadership of Chancellor Gooch and her team and the hard work of so many people here. Let's give them a hand.
the strong enrolment gains here this year that the Chancellor mentioned, the excellence that the Department of Education grant recognises, the success of the Prairie Stars on this beautiful campus's fields and courts, but also in the classroom. All of this speaks to the culture of success and achievement being built here at UIS. This university is a real asset for our state's capital and for the region. I also extend hearty congratulations to the exceptional people who will soon be honoured tonight. Again, thank you all for gathering tonight to celebrate our deserved honorees and UIS and Go Prairie Stars. Okay, that was, that was President Killeen talking. Thank you. And now it's that special time in our evening where we get to honour two UIS alumni who exemplify the University of Illinois system's vision and mission. Our honorees will be presented with framed awards and we will have opportunity to hear remarks from each of them. First up is the University of Illinois Distinguished Service Award, which is bestowed upon a person who represents the important role of education in our lives and society. This individual demonstrates pride in the university and significantly advances the university's mission by means of their extraordinary commitment, dedication, and service. Additionally, the word distinguished speaks to the recipient's stature and visibility within our community of university alumni, students, faculty, and staff. This year's Distinguished Service Award goes to Dr. Karen Moransky, who is recognized... I can't, I can't control this crowd. Um, <laughs> who is recognised for her distinguished service as a co-founder of the Capital Scholars Honours Program, which introduces first-year <laughs> see, which introduces first-year students to UIS. Karen served UIS as a faculty member and as an administrator for 21 years. Her entire career at UIS was focused on helping students achieve their educational pursuits. And her proudest achievement at UIS was bringing to campus a diverse population of first-time, first-year students. She fo fostered a culture of diversity and inclusion at UIS through curriculum, student services, and policy change. During her time here, she also helped build a foundation for a more traditional undergraduate honours program through her commitment to student-centred learning. Karen earned her MA and PhD in Medieval English Literature from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Her research centred on medieval prophecy, modern historical fiction, and pedagogy. She has also worked on research projects related to unconscious bias and assessment of global learning. Karen, Karen currently is the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Sonoma State University in California. She also has served two years as President of the Association for Interdisciplinary Studies. Dr. Moransky, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you for all that you have accomplished throughout your career. It is my honor and pleasure to present to you the University of Illinois Distinguished Service Award.
I told them they wouldn't be able to see me if they didn't have a stool behind this podium. Uh, that's why I don't do podiums. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, what a special evening and what a special honor. I am truly grateful to be back here tonight, back among so many friends, colleagues, and students. I thank the UIS Alumni Board, chaired by the determined, leaderly, and incredibly competent Carly Hawkins. for selecting me for this award. I could not have been more surprised and thrilled when Chuck Schrage called. Uh, I am lucky to have gotten to spend the first 20 or so years of my career here at UIS. And tonight, I get to thank you for all the wonderful opportunities um, and memories. Before I get started, I do want to acknowledge my family who is here tonight, my husband John, my daughter Kate, her partner Peyton. We are so happy to be here. Kate spent her life uh, toddling among the students in Lincoln Residence Hall uh, and so uh, shares a special connection to, to this um, my career uh, and this process with me, so thank you. Um, and I take special pride in being one of the five faculty members in the first class of UIS faculty in 1995. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Having interviewed at a place called Sangamon State. A sign of order in the universe, or irony, or strange fortune, is my career moving from one SSU, Sangamon State, to another SSU, Sonoma State. I, I don't make this stuff up. I had never imagined getting a faculty position here in the cornfields of central Illinois, but that is where I landed. I always said that if UIS had been a few hundred miles further south, where it is nice and warm for a southerner from southwest Louisiana, it would have been perfect. <laughs> but I really had no idea how fortunate I was coming to a university that was on the precipice of so much change. UIS was always, and I hope still is, in the process of becoming under my friend, Chancellor Janet Gooch's leadership. Sometimes it can be hard to see what a productive state of being that is. Change, transformation in the world of higher education has been the pervasive driving force of my career, and it certainly started here. To be brave, some might say foolhardy. To be strategic, to envision what is more, what is next for an institution, what a college degree can do for students, their families, and the communities they live in, and to make change happen, that is what I learned at UIS. In those first years at UIS, the lessons were fast and plentiful. I had no experience, for example, of non-traditional students, working women and retiring men, until I came to UIS but I learned how to serve their needs. Dr. Judy Everson, who is here tonight, and other English faculty, including my sorely missed friend, Dr. Ethan Lewis, will remember Angel Bob, um, the student whose wife sent him to school, and I told this story yesterday, so those of you who've already heard it, forgive me, but his wife sent him to school because he liked to write poetry, and she needed him to stop bugging her by sitting around the house all day after leaving work on disability. He sometimes didn't have the money for gas uh, to come to the university, and his family knew real rural Illinois poverty. But he persisted, starring as the angel in the second Shepherd's play on a windy day in 1996, with his lines written on his arm. He graduated, and that was a lesson for us all in making sure every student succeeds. From faculty and administrators like 
and I'm going to just list a bunch of people here. And if, uh, if I don't name you, you are fondly in my thoughts. But Ann Larson, Pat Langley, Annette Van Dyke, Judy Everson, my special mentor, Charlie Schweighauser, um, who encouraged me to a life of administration. I don't know if that was wise. Um, Bill Blomer, Bob and Debbie McGregor, Ray Schroeder, Margot Dooley, Harry Berman, who is also here tonight, Lynn Pardee, and so many more. I learned about shared governance, policy and process, academic planning, picking one's battles, the perils of administrative life, and seeing through what you start. I would be happy to chat with any of you, perhaps over a glass of Sonoma County wine, uh, about how those lessons still resonate with me today as I lead whole-scale academic reform at Sonoma State. I couldn't do what I am doing now without the guidance I received and the people who led me forward at UIS. When we jumped in the late 1990s into the process of creating the lower division, what would become the Capital Scholars Program and the whole baccalaureate degree at UIS, I certainly, and this is going to resonate for those of you who are here this afternoon, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I can't believe they let us, they let me do it. What on earth were you thinking, President Naomi Lin. <laughs> it was a grand experiment based on work from the early 90s by Ann Larson, Judy Everson, Jim Stewart, and others. Jim Stewart's propensity for thinking outside the box, for disregarding norms, and pretty much all conceived notions of how things should be done, led us productively and positively to interdisciplinary team teaching, integrated humanities and social science question courses, uh, woo, the beginnings of art, music, and speech programs, and to collaborations between student affairs and academic affairs. Thank you, Jim Cordy, May Knoll, and the inimitable Clarice Ford including living learning communities and administrative offices in residence halls. In those early years, that meant students visited my office in Lincoln Residence Hall in their bunny slippers and pajamas to tell me they definitely were not whining because they knew I had a thing about whining, um, but I really needed to do something immediately about the latest travesty of justice. That's for you, Jason. Um, <laughs> It all worked out amazingly well. Even if five member faculty teams never quite worked, and even if that whole first year, I listened to students over and over telling me they were all going to leave after the first year. Thankfully, they did not. Thus, Carly Hawkins and Kyle Simpson sit on the alumni board and are the clever and industrious minds behind the reunion of the first four years of Capital Scholar students that is happening this weekend. Hooray. Would all the Cappies in the room tonight please raise your hand? All right. The moniker Pioneers on the Prairie, remember that? May have been aggravating at the time. But it was real. We all took a chance together. What an intense, liberating, sometimes crazy-making, glorious time in the history of this institution. I quite simply adored it. I shouldn't have done it. I should have kept being a faculty member, a teacher, a medieval scholar. And I lost something in moving away from that path. But in hindsight, I have never regretted my work in building the Capital Scholars and the Capital Scholars Honors Program. And while it eventually took me away from the job I loved most, CAP Director, I also do not regret the second part of my career, the dizzying, dizzyingly coterminous work of building a second program for first-year students at UIS and creating the general education program that made it possible to bring in new populations of students to the institution. 
the collaborative work that produced UIS's general education program and all the student services that accompanied it was a victory of shared governance, of a real effort to achieve equity and inclusion, and a lesson in keeping what was good about the curricular flexibility and the social justice mission of Sangamon State University while building a structure for UIS that would support cultural competence, a sense of social responsibility, belonging, and student success. Some of you in this room were part of the effort to cr create and are still sustaining the engaged citizenship common experience. And it was again an experience um, and an experiment an opportunity to do the right thing by our students. It was a good path to take, and this world needs even more college students who have the skills we sought to inculcate in that teaching and learning. And so what I really learned at UIS is to be, I'm finishing, um, is to be thankful for change and not to be afraid of it. Programs and curriculum don't and shouldn't stay the same. We know that, that post-pandemic in ways we never knew it before. And higher education can and must change to meet the current needs of its students and society in general. I am so proud to have created programs that have lasted, structures that make a difference in the lives of our students, curricula that challenge faculty to grow and work together in ways they never had before. But we should always envision new paths and meet new challenges. If I were teaching today, um, many are the times that I wish I was back in the classroom with my good teaching partner, Pinky Wassenberg, um, I might teach Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower, perhaps instead of Ursula Gawain. Ah. <laughs> It is a novel I have come back to again and again in recent years because it is about change. And this is the, in the English teacher teaching English, um, so you get it. Butler acknowledges, there is no end to what a living world will demand of you, of all of us. Lauren Olamina, the young black protagonist of the novel, as one critic puts it, has the audacity to be hopeful in the face of climate change, violence, and hate. It is the gift that informs her leadership. Butler says, all successful life is adaptable, opportunistic, tenacious, interconnected, and fecund. Understand this, use it, and so we must. What I discovered at UIS is a way to make change in community. We learn from and with one another. Community keeps us close to our values, but also lets us move outside comfort, outside the known. That continues to be our challenge in higher education, and that is what I personally want to keep doing for the rest of my career. Thanks for the lessons, UIS. Thank you. I don't know, um, Karen, I think this um, podium actually is worthy of Abraham Lincoln, don't you think? It's, uh, <laughs> this, this award is a wonderful tribute to an amazing person whose impact is clearly still being felt at UIS. Thank you again, Karen. Our second award tonight is the University of Illinois Alumni Achievement Award, the highest honor bestowed upon graduates of this university. The award is presented to an alumnus who earned a university degree, has achieved outstanding success, and attained national or international distinction in their chosen profession or field of work. And the awardee is an individual who has inspired others. Micah R. Bartlett is a 1995 graduate of the accountancy program 
and he recently retired as President and Chief Executive Officer of Town and Country Financial Corporation. Micah's 33-year career in banking and finance demonstrates exceptional leadership and his professional excellence raises the visibility and profile of the College of Business and Management as well as the university as a whole. He started out as a bank teller and worked his way up the ladder, ultimately serving as president and CEO for 16 years. He is also a past chairman of the Illinois Bankers Association and served on several councils of the American Bankers Association. In broader service to the community, Michael was chair of the United Way of Central Illinois' annual United Way campaign and served on the Strategic Leadership Council of the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce's Quantum Growth Partnership Initiative, which, which aims to improve the local economy and overall quality of life in the community. He also served in volunteer leadership roles with the university including the Accountancy Alumni Advisory Board, the College of Business and Management Dean's Advisory Committee, and the Reaching Stellar Campaign Planning Committee. Micah and his wife Peggy established and endowed the Peggy and Micah Bartlett Scholarship for Project Mid-State Student Support for Teaching, which prepares students to teach in local schools. Following graduation from UIS, he earned the Certified Public Accountant designation, attended the Graduate School of Banking at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and earned his MBA from Northern Illinois University. Micah continues to be involved in business as an investor, business advisor, and speaker. Micah R. Bartlett. For the many ways that you have answered the call to service and tirelessly worked for the betterment of your community, I am so very pleased to present you with the University of Illinois Alumni Achievement Award. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I'm truly honored to be here this evening to receive this recognition. Uh, it's also been a pleasure to get to know Dr. Moransky, and I'd like to congratulate her on receiving the Distinguished Service Award. As an aside, as we've been making our way through the halls of the university the last couple of days, I cannot count the number of times that I've seen staff and faculty come up to give her a hug at the sight of her through the hallway. That's quite a testament. Congratulations, Karen. I know that the alumni ranks of UIS are full of accomplished individuals, which makes me that much more proud to be in your company. To be acknowledged by the institution that played such a pivotal role in shaping my journey is truly a privilege. Reflecting on my time at UIS brings back a flood of memories. I thought I would start by sharing one of my first experiences at UIS. I came to campus one day to fill out some forms or maybe register for classes, and I was trying to find the right building within the not-so-temporary buildings portion of campus. In my car, I turned down what I assumed was the right roadway to get to the building. But once I reached an opening, I quickly realized instead that it was actually a wide sidewalk that I was driving on. You can imagine my embarrassment when I entered an area full of students walking around and had to quickly turn my car around and exit. There I was at an institution of higher education and I looked and felt like a complete idiot. 
Unfortunately, the feeling I had then was not the first nor last of its kind. Like many folks early in education and early in career, I often felt a bit out of place, out of my comfort zone, and maybe even a little bit like a fraud, like I wasn't sure I deserved the chances I had been given, nor the ability to rise to the occasion. I often felt like a fish out of water, or in that particular case, a car on a sidewalk. But education, my friends, is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you come from, knowledge has the power to level the playing field and give us all the chance to rise above our perceived limitations. My subsequent experience at UIS not only made me feel welcome, but also more confident and prepared for my future. I was fortunate in my career to have tremendous opportunities at relatively young ages, especially the chance to be a CFO at age 22 and a CEO at age 33. Not only did my UIS education equip me with the practical knowledge in my chosen field of accounting and finance, but it also developed my confidence and abilities to think critically, communicate, and learn. Education is the great equalizer. My advice for our youngest alumni is to be yourself and to go for it. There's not much traffic on the extra mile. So raise your hand, stick your neck out, and dare to be different, but always be yourself. None of us, including me, had it all figured out. I still don't. We're not all meant to be the same, so be the best version of you that you can be. Now I'd like to share some gratitude. I'm grateful for my education. I'm grateful for my career. But most importantly, I'm grateful for all the people who have touched my life and made it richer. I'd like to start with thanking the university and the UIS Alumni Board for selecting me for this award. I want to thank President Timothy Colleen and EVP Nick Jones, Chancellor Janet Gooch, UIS Alumni Board Chair Carly Hawkins, Awards Committee Chair Kyle Simpson, Vice Chancellor Jeff Lorber, Associate Vice Chancellor Chuck Schrage, who by the way has been extremely helpful leading up to this event, and yes. and Director of Development Katie Champion-Williams, who I've gotten to know even better while traveling around campus and on campus the last two days. It's been great to be back on campus and see firsthand all the progress and initiatives underway. I had too many great professors to mention all, but with my accounting degree, I would be remiss to not mention the late Don Stanhope and Leonard Branson as two dominant figures of influence in my educational life. I know Leonard Branson is here tonight and I really appreciate being able to see him again. I also wanna thank my family, friends, and colleagues, especially those who are here with me tonight, including one of my stepsons, my mother, siblings, niece, friends and colleagues, and their spouses. Thank you all for being here. I love and appreciate you all. Most importantly, I wanna thank my wife, Peggy. Early in our relationship, when I decided to pursue my MBA, we both had demanding jobs, and we agreed that instead of me contributing my share to household chores and duties, she might have to do more of that while I focused on my MBA. However, somehow after graduation and for many years later, those duties never quite got rebalanced the way they should have, so she's definitely been doing way more than her fair share. Sorry about that, Peggy, I'm just not sure how that happened. <laughs> But joking aside, Peggy is the most selfless person I know and has been my constant support and most trusted confidant for the entire 27 years I've known her. Thank you, Peggy. I also want to thank the Board of Directors, shareholders, employees, and customers of Town & Country Bank, which is now part of Heartland Bank and Trust Company following a merger last year. At Town & Country, our mission was to empower the financial well-being of our communities one person at a time. 
And we had a team full of great employees who lived that mission inside and outside the bank every day. Town & Country was a huge success story, nearly tripling in size, improving our performance by a factor of 12, and improving the financial lives of thousands of individuals, organizations, and businesses. I was blessed to have the opportunity to lead the organization for nearly 16 years. Some of my deepest friendships come from the colleagues with whom I worked and other bankers within the industry and our state and national associations. I'm now retired from banking but remain engaged in the industry and other business and investment interests. Education is the great equalizer, so let's all pay it forward. I would like to encourage us all to continue to find ways to support education and the great University of Illinois at Springfield. Whether it's advocacy, financial support through scholarships or otherwise, mentoring a young mind or other methods, each of us has the power to make a difference in someone's life. Supporting UIS is an excellent way for us to pay forward the opportunities we've received for the benefit of the next generation. Education is the great equalizer, so let's all pay it forward. I am incredibly honored to stand before you today as the recipient of the University of Illinois Alumni Achievement Award. Thank you all. Thank you, Micah, for all that you do, and thank you for joining us this evening for this wonderful event. As we conclude this portion of our celebration, please join me in one final round of applause for both our remarkable honorees. And thank you to all of you for helping, making this, helping make this, this special evening a success. On behalf of the entire University of Illinois system community, thanks to all of you. And now I'll turn it back to Carly Hawkins for some final thoughts as we wrap up this amazing celebration. Thank you. I was reminiscing with some people over lunch today um, about being at the opening of this museum um, many years ago, uh, which I happened to be at working um, because I had gotten a job straight out of having my UIS internship that required me to be here. And so this is a real full circle moment for me in so many ways. So we are proud to call each of tonight's recipients a part of the UIS family. And I'd like to thank the UIS Division of Advancement, led by Vice Chancellor Jeff Lorber, for organizing the Alumni Gala. Thank you so much to you and your team for pulling this together. Let's also have a round of applause for everyone at Cured Catering for preparing this evening's food and drink, and the Presidential Library and Museum for hosting our events. We have much to be proud of tonight and throughout the year. For five decades now, a world-class education based on service to others has been available right here in Springfield. I'm so proud to have been part of the Capital Scholars Program and an alumni of UAS every day, and I hope you feel the same. If you are parked in the museum parking garage, uh, an advancement staff member will be waiting at the exit of the garage to validate your parking as you leave in your vehicle, very important. Uh, and thank you so much again for being here tonight. We appreciate your support of our university and of our alumni, and I would like to congratulate our honorees one last time for everything they've brought to UIS and the world. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.